and I, I've, I've been taking jazz, so I, you know I can relate to it. It's uh, really very unrewarding for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then suddenly you'll get like an epiphany, you know, and you'll go, "Oh, I, I'm hearing that harmony that I." Before you, you're looking at the music and you're going, "What? What? What are they doing?" You know that kind yeah. of thing. You know. Well, I don't. I don't read music, and I can't appreciate it on that level. But I can like, like what always struck me. And I, I started listening to jazz with free jazz because it it connected with the punk and the noise and the death mm-hmm. metal stuff that I was listening mm-hmm. to. And um, yeah, you were into some um, atonal like cage and, yeah, like, and some of those. I you know, like take a bunch stuff. of pots and pans and roll them down the stairs. I uh, I'm still I'm still a fan. But, <laughs> but, but, but what struck Love me it. is is it's it is so completely imminent and immersive. Like you can drop into a good jazz tune anywhere you want. It's never the same song. Like I can't. Like I can listen to one of those, particularly when he had his classic quartet. I can listen to that same song a hundred times. It's never the same song yeah. because I'm listening to Garrison or I'm listening to right, Jones. Right. And as I get older, it makes more sense to me. Right. Like suddenly I'm like, you know, I was I was too young, but now I'm getting it. You know, now I got the the feel. Wow. Yeah. And it's interesting because part of the parallel with not that I'm by any means, but Coltrane was was obsessed with a character named Doc Savage. And Doc Savage was a pulp hero from the right. 30s and 40s, right. 50s, up until the late 50s, and then he stopped. And uh, I was a kid. I, I was obsessed with, with Doc Savage. And Doc Savage would get up every morning at 4 in the morning. Oh. And he would uh, exercise, and he would read, and he would do two hours of body and mind training every morning. And Coltrane did the same thing. And I did the same thing, literally. Right. That's one of the. Re- that's what started me this whole thing. I remember as a kid. Okay, I got to do. I got to whatever. And this obsessive in, um, focus on learning a skill and all that sort of stuff. Like you know, like you guys were talking about, like how you you know, just sort of wandered into college and right. all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And my experience from birth in the womb is being an obsessive neurotic bastard. There was always. I've got to get the best to be the best at this. I have to be able to learn this. I have to be, it's like not like you were talking about playing ping pong. You know, I think I may have played three ping pong games in my life. Right. <laughs> and if I played ping pong. But if it was on the And if yes, I played ping pong, I would play 750 hours a week of ping pong until I could be. Until so you could be really great at it. That's all I could do. Like I, when I started playing disc golf, like literally there's a towel in my office and I practice every day for hours on my form. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what I it's like okay. getting, you know, okay, I gotta be able to throw 400 feet, gotta be able to, okay, I got 400 feet, I gotta be able to do this. So literally, so when you talk about this stuff, I'm crazy. Well, well you're just uh, not part right. of the slacker culture. Well, yeah, I, think it's yeah, a form, right. I think it's a form of slacker because it keeps me away from maybe some other things, you know? Yeah. There, there's, there's a, uh, there's a yeah. thing there you that, got you the know. Depth. It's the breath of <laughs> yeah, it's, no, yeah, it's yeah. like, <laughs> you know, my wife will be, like, what is it? Well, the first time we hung out, and my, my wife regrets saying this, she'll, she'll try to take it back. But when she mentioned, she goes, you know, I wish you drank. Because, you know, we could just be sitting here enjoying this, but I can tell. Like, we were at the, we were at, here we, go. Uh, we were at uh, Jarfly. She's sitting there, she's got a drink, and she's just hanging out. And she goes, you look so intense. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm, I've been reading up on this, some, some existential constructs, and I'm thinking about how to be able, you know, like she said, but she's having a drink. She's like, dial it back, bro. And yeah, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like, you the know. game's on, the music's playing, whatever <laughs> it is. It's like, I'm yeah. like, wow. Man. <laughs> even like when somebody posted on, uh, I'm a huge fan of this band called Wire. They're one of the first art punk bands from the 70s, and I'm obsessed with them, like everything. And so somebody posted online three weeks ago their favorite post 2000 Wire songs because they reformed and they've been. And so for the last three weeks, I've been rehearsing in my mind with those 10, and I keep going over, and I can't be that one. So I go home, and if I have any time like this morning, when I go home at some point today, I'm going to listen to a couple hours of Wire. I'm going to go through there. You know, that's a good one, but I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) But in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have my list. (laughs) All right, so one of the things I know about that type of issue Mm -hmm. is uh, there's no end. There, there's there's actually no goal that you reach and go, aha, whew, man, made it. No, it's the next thing that starts before the last one ends, so it's an ongoing chain, and I'm just, you know, I'm just adding that thought to the conversation. Oh, I, I, I have a friend of mine. We went to school together, and she's a psychologist, too. 
And uh, she would say, I walk into a bookstore and I feel so overwhelmed that I'll never read those books. Right. And it, it really struck me because I walk into a bookstore and say, oh, thank God I'll never finish this. <laughs> because what would I do if I did? You know? That's it. That, that's that's a, why that's kind of you know, when I discovered Soul Seek and I could, um, I could steal any album, and you name the most obscure album ever made, and somebody on Soul Seek has it because they're all obsessive bastards. And it's like I, I found the ocean. I'm like, man, it is never. I will never drink this. It will always be present for me in some form or fashion. And so, it's well, about now, passion. are you? Are, okay, I, I'm, I'm fine with that because there's a lot of content. If we're making podcasts, I mean, we never run out. All right, so that's a good thing. And on the other hand. Okay, relaxing, being mm. comfortable, being in the moment, let it go. We talked yeah. about mindfulness. We talked about um, relaxation. You well, we just uh, got kind of let get off the grid, get to well, a place where you're comfortable, and this moment is great. Yeah, well, well it, that, that's there's a concept of a lived moment. And again, I'm gonna obsess over the lived moment. I'm gonna I'm think about you it about from this, every, by the way, off over, over every, time. every yeah. the vertices of the lived moment. And you know, like, um, like I think there is a way to to take the passion, to uh, there there is um, there is a teaching embedded in Coltrane's music about how to exist and how to be present for the breath that you have, how to be present for the moment that you have no choice to be, but to experience in some form or fashion, and you you can you can bring that to bear on things. I mean that that's not a I sure. mean it, it is when I say being driven that, that that's certainly a thing. Well, that I am, the but problem I, I think I'm uh, in, is that you don't let yourself um, relax and be in that moment because something else kind of kicks back in that you've got to do. You're sort of searching, and and uh, there's always something more out there. But but, but here's the thing because I think that when you talk about the live moment, there's such a thing which which we, there's a, it's the imminent experience. And you, you guys may experience this with music, but um, I can have, uh, I, part of the reason I've never done drugs is because I don't have to. If I really listen, and I don't like, I have a music room at home. It's, it's a little bigger than this room. Uh, it's bigger than this room. Okay, and, we need to um, go to the studio then. Right there, there, is, there, there is a, and there's no, there's no there, it's just a stereo, and um, there are no chairs, because when I listen to music, I move. And so I literally can enter this sort of dervish space. And I, as I get older, it's a little harder because the next day I feel like I've been hit by a truck. But I can be in that space. If Julie goes off to visit the in-laws and takes the kid, I can be in that space for eight, nine hours, and my mind right. is blown. Like right. I am literally, I am, I am communing with God. I am, I am in that space. And so with music, with, with, the, with the reading, if um, I don't know if you've, you've probably had this experience where you've been literally floored by a sentence or a concept, sure. And when it hits you, you have this sort of this moment of expansion, and like you just sort of set the thing down and you go, "Holy cow!" And I assume that's what drugs are, because I've actually I've never drank or had a cup of coffee or done any any mind altering substance whatsoever. I'm basically Mormon, it's quite a without the underwear. I mean, literally without the underwear, not just the fancy underwear, but no underwear at all. But uh, okay, that's too much information. <laughs> and uh, but but I understand where you're going with that because but, I think uh, that's uh, that. Uh, all right, so. First of all, thank you for revealing uh, some of the things. That I'm not wearing underwear. A lot of us have questions, <laughs> but it's not about the underwear. But a lot of, a lot of things about, um, okay, so yeah, 4 o'clock in the morning, you get time to yourself. You're exploring so many things. You're constantly reading and updating things. And, um, you know, the shark in the, um, in the ocean that n never stops moving. But are you okay with mm -hmm. with that? Because that example you just gave was you just found that moment and you could be there for eight hours. You mm -hmm. could just kind of immerse yourself in well, that. Well, our, our friends, I've mentioned before, our, our Buddhist friends, they have that, that saying that if you only enjoy the meal but not the cooking, the meal, the washing, the dishes, you only have a third of a life. <clears throat> you know, you, you have these moments of eminence because they also, they carry over into other, even the moments of the mundane. And... Um, so there is a way to uh, to hear a little bit of whole train playing, even standing in line, you know, to get your um, your Slim Jim in the Seven Eleven. Okay, so you're I, bringing I, it way down <laughs> now, but yeah. But, I, but I, I, I think there is. I think there is a way to be to be present in those things. So it's not like um, like I think um, I may be wrong in this because I, I I certainly can't. I don't have a bird's eye view of my own life, but I don't live. For Saturday, for that eight hours, I think there is a way in which I can visit these spaces 
but I carry them with me. They're not like, it's not like, um, um, like I don't, um, I think I'm pretty good at being alive. There's a famous uh, quote by, by Winnicott, uh, it's Winnicott's prayer. Dear Lord, let me be alive when I die. And I think, uh, even though there are, you know, I mean on an average week I put in a good 70 hours, there's still, I can stay alive and breathing during a good percentage of those, so. So maybe that's, uh, and that's, maybe that's uh, a thing. You know, when you work with someone in therapy, they often come to you, um, they are condemned to the life that they have. They are stuck. They are, I had a, uh, a patient I hadn't seen in a long time, suddenly came back into my office, and I hadn't seen him about six years, and and they were just telling me stories of, of being, um, of uh, just series of god-awful life choices, and I could sort of see, like, and as they're telling me this, I'm like, holy cow, man, this is, this is heavy. And so for a moment I get lost with them, the despair of, of this chain of events that they've intentionally, unintentionally be part of. You allow yourself to be in despair with them in that moment, but then you're, you know, you hear Coltrane playing. You're aware that there is a, there, there's something, and that allows me to keep at least one toe on the bank to maybe help them come a little closer to the shore. Okay. We'll see how it goes, because that's just our first session in a while, but good gravy. No, we, yeah. we've talked about the idea of the participant and observer, the yeah. one foot on the bank, one foot yeah. in the stream, uh, how important that is for therapy and the conversation yeah. and the movement in therapy. Yeah. So uh, so you're, you're able to do that. Well, um, this has sort of been an organic uh, start for our podcast today because we do yeah, well, I think we should in. call this with, yes. with the, po the podcast where you've been hacked. We got hacked. Yes, See, we did. Uh, so yes, that's right. And uh, <laughs> before this is over, I've got to move a camera. So we're going to have a little technical break here in just a second. But uh, it's always uh, good to have uh, uh, Dr. Rose needs an audience. And so sometimes, the, <laughs> you know, the audience have won today. We got the upper echelon yeah, right guess, in here today. So. Yeah, we got to, uh, yeah. If we could just take the cruise here. The cruise has been here. I That's sent right. you the picture of the cruise right. in, the, in the studio. I can tell, you know, so. I can tell, I can feel his Although presence. Although there's some trouble brewing, so I want to be careful about how that goes. <laughs> there I'm is, there's saying. trouble? Yeah, well, you. <laughs> but, uh, you're yeah, start, no, you're no, going to no. start something. No. I can tell no, you I, right I can now. feel, like, I, I can feel that, the, you know, that, um, that his presence, you know, it's like he, 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 he sort of bends space and time wherever he is, and I can feel that, I can feel that curve, you know? There's a cruise curve going and, on. And the good thing wrong? is he can explain it to <laughs> he you. Could, he could, yeah. <laughs> exactly, he could, yeah. Exactly, what you're saying. Yeah. So that's always good. Looking forward to him. Matter yeah. of fact, I think we're on the books for next Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. The cruise will be in the studio. Well, what is he going to yes. talk about? What's, what's he going to say? It's going to be... Um, what is what is? The well, we're going to grill the expert. Oh, and that's, that's uh, right. The, that's the, right. the questions the that the that lay people like uh, Mike and Tom want. I heard about to, that. I was. This is really intriguing. So, what sort of questions do you ask an expert? Okay, so for for a quantum in quantum physics, for instance. Uh, what's up with that dead cat? Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Like uh, the, uh, there was a couple other ones, like uh, what was the one you came up with, Mike? You came up with one oh, that was uh, um, well, that was I, out I, there. You know, um, I, you know, I first mentioned aliens, for example. The mm -hmm. uh, the idea that there are a hundred billion galaxies. Uh, mm -hmm. There are 100 billion stars in the, each of those galaxies, all having planets revolving mm -hmm. around. Why haven't we heard from s someone yet? Yeah. Or maybe we have. If you listen to the last uh, Joe Rogan podcast with Dan Aykroyd, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, that guy be careful have, there. I he may have taken a turn. I've heard about that. Well, what I, one of the questions I'd ask him is like, you know, how come um, astrophysicists get more chicks than Sinatra? What, what what's what's what? What, well, what is the deal with that? Okay, well we can we can put that on the agenda to talk Ask about, him about that. Like, up, man, maybe just send is, in some uh, what viewer is questions, and then we that will, guy, you know, uh, that guy's got a, he's got more notches on his belt than I don't know, Tiny Tim. What? All right, of, so, so so what sort of questions this, would you ask a psychologist? Uh, well, the the first thing I would ask about this mindfulness okay. uh, concept. You would, you so would. so so many people are really. As you say, they're they're focused on I'm a prisoner of my life. Mm -hmm. So if if you're the prisoner, maybe you hold a key. I, I, what, how how does all that work? That would be a, mm -hmm. a if I came to you and I said all these forces are mm -hmm. are impinging on me and I I can't seem to get unstuck. My relationships are bad. Uh, my job is not happening for me. Mm -hmm. Help me. Help me, Mr. Wizard. <laughs> you know that, 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 that's a tough one, man. And it, I, I, um, I'd say retire. 
<laughs> hey, and, uh, and retirement's Listen, awesome, let me by just the way, say bro. It's about retirement. <laughs> All good. Uh, here yeah, we go. maybe, so maybe, maybe there's something to work for. Maybe I'll make it. I'll make on, it. on the other hand, you, my friend, mm -hmm. um, retired doesn't seem to fit. I'm just going to say, <laughs> might, given what we've just learned about you. I might. Uh, uh, I might yeah, it's not a, yeah, I, that's like, a. That's a fixed point in time. We're not moving toward that. It's, We're just. It's going to be a progress. It's funny. One of my I mentors, um, he just retired. Um, he was uh, one of the first psychoanalysts I knew in my program, and he's 91. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> and uh, I think he had a private practice and was teaching up until the age of 90. Wow. So, All right, let's get know, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a that's, pretend we are living longer, isn't it? and so that, he's yeah, making I think, use yeah. of that, that kind of thing. He, sure. um, he, uh, I think uh, he did, you know. I think the reason he retired was because his meth habit. I think it finally okay. Finally there you go. See, that's a, that's that's, that's why up. that's exactly that statement right there. Um, <laughs> and Sean Cruzen, the Cruz, uh -huh. coming in the studio with those kind of questions. <laughs> Um, that guy needs a meth habit. The, I'm just saying, pit the that guy needs me. meth. If anybody, I normally wouldn't say this to someone, but you know what I mean. I think he needs a drug habit. We <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't. Wouldn't All right, we are so off the rails today, um, but at the, at the same time, like we said, it's organic. We're kind of moving towards it, something it, it here. Well, we talked about it, several different things. You want to kind of uh, go on any of those topics that you, you well, just well, brought I'm, up? I'm intrigued by, intrigued by a couple of things because, you know, Hackett has the five questions for experts, and I felt that, you know, I don't think I qualify as an expert in any way, but I would at some point like to have those, hear those five questions because I would like, you know, I just want to know, like, what what would be uh, what would be, you know, well, the first first thing, Mike and I have to go to the panel of experts. We have the panel of experts panel that, of experts. that yeah. devises the questions for the experts. Is this the chicken and it. biscuit place downstairs? Uh, that uh, yeah, uh, Brewster's ice cream was the last Actually, time. Actually, yeah, the last one was it, outside uh, Brewster's okay, ice cream. Right, that's, uh, just that's whoever, okay. whoever's at Brewster's. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, well, I'd, uh, yeah, these are, these uh, these questions uh, dubious at best, <laughs> a little sketchy, is what somebody said. Okay, it's things. like so. Hope, uh, it's just the way it is. Right my luck, you get you get my, you, if you were to ask me, you get my questions um, 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 mixed up with the. Um, with the uh, adult film star that you were going to interview, so suddenly right. I ask questions like, you know, like, what is it with that gag reflex? I'm like, well, I don't know. I, just, uh, <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. See, it, it, this is. I'm glad Dr. Hackett is getting uh, uh, to observe and to understand what I have to go through yeah, sorry, to sorry. get a podcast out on the on the World Wide Web. So you um, know, one of the questions of we things, asked, but ooh. hey, we keep doing it for some reason. So, the first yeah. grill, the expert, we we grilled Mike and. Since Mike was the on the grill, he Let's couldn't just grill say himself. Reluctant, uh, <laughs> but the, remember but, the movie Reluctant Astronaut with Don Knotts? Okay, that was uh, yeah, the, I that remember was that. Was, uh, that was where that, I was that, at. Yeah, as, uh, yeah you did a movie expert. with a talking fish. Remember that one? Oh, please. <laughs> but worst the, one of the worst. But still, we liked Don Knotts. Okay. The, the questions we did, uh, or that the panel of experts came up with for Mike, w revolved around the, the idea that, okay, we're in a new millennium. What are the uh, first? What are the mental health issues in this millennium that may be different from previous times? And then second, uh, we went to the idea of okay, so what are strategies for dealing with those issues? So hmm. that that's the kind of thing we came up wow. with. But we had very specific questions, you know. Well, see, we, we talked about that—the idea that um, yeah. that uh, the Guten mi Gutenberg mind versus the digital mind. Yes. And that that might. Like Matter of fact, I pull some of the stuff <laughs> we talked about from that. that. Was, you see, that, yeah. that that's why these things kind of help and come together sometimes. Because so the, the, the idea that that like when my son, and it, just an example, it's like my son is um he plays uh, he plays League of Legends, and uh, by the way, CSU now has a League of Legends team. It's like a that's like a campus sport. Oh, is that one of the things? <laughs> so, okay. So yeah. uh, I, I get um. It. And he sees, I keep saying, tell me this character. I got this character. This character is so cool. Let me show you the character, how cool he is. You know, how cool the character is. Kept saying, cool, how character the cool is. Right, right, right. So I go up and he says, and this is the character. And it's a female character. Right. It's a woman. Oh, look how cool she is. She's on I'm thinking, when I was his age, I couldn't do that. I couldn't have chosen a female character. Hmm. No, I couldn't. Well, have, those, those I would have. Totally. I mean, I could have thought it, but I couldn't have expressed it. And could I have said it to my dad? Now, my dad probably was pretty cool, and he was a liberal commie, so probably he would have been <laughs> more than okay with it. But um, uh, if he only could see me now. But um, I think that notice how the very fabric, the web of culture, has changed. So you know. Um, 
that there has there has been a movement and my mind is different than his it already is like mm -hmm. he has I, I i he is a digital native he is he has a digital mind he can think when uh uh, when he's trying to teach me how to play one of the games, like the keyboard to him is a different thing. To, mm -hmm. to me, it is simply a word processing right. go and and so l you can literally see the, the the shift and the change. And I, since I do a lot of work with with adolescents in my private practice, you know, they they force me to move out of my Gutenberg, you know, um, uh, book sort of way of thinking about things into in, and you can you can often tell the difference between you know, other the therapists like. Um, if if you're gonna work with folks within, I work with a lot of college students too. You're sort of you're sure. forced to be able to think to to. But I still will not have the mind that he does. So when you talk about what what are the mental health issues we have to face, one thing is it's you 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 can't go back. We can't no. when the and again not not to get political, but you know uh, our current president kept saying let's make America great again. And I think of part of what drove the folks who voted for him is the sheer terror of realizing that first off, there never was the America you want to go back to. It's it's right. a it's a, it's it's a, what we call après coup in psychoanalytic thought. It's a retroactive reconstruction. No lost certainties can be found. But by the sheer terror of the fact that we are now we have been replaced, and we are slowly but surely being replaced. I will not be able to compete in the world that my son is being is being uh, uh, formed for, and that's a scary thing, no? I think so. I think so. And and we talked about some of this with uh, our podcast. We're talking about the the coping skills and and the way to sort of take a break from all of the chaos in uh, that is going on. And so, uh, yeah, these basic counseling skills as well, where mm -hmm. you have some empathy, you develop the ability to see it from another person's point of view, but also you're authentic. You're mm -hmm. trying to be who you are, and mm -hmm. I think that's the way we let off this conversation today. So mm -hmm. uh, it, it seems to permeate a lot of things that we talk about, and I, 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 well, I'm it, down with that. But I think, it, mm -hmm. and you mentioned too, uh, Dan, just to say that this is a progressive thing. It's it's what's mm -hmm. before, it's, it's mm -hmm. during, it's after. It's, mm -hmm. a, uh, it's a chain of events to be um, truly aware and uh, in the moment, as we talked about so many times. And think about what you said there with the in the moment. You mentioned the mindfulness. I think at its core, and um, there's a philosopher named, uh, I've mentioned him before, Slava Zizek. 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 Uh, uh, by the way, some, <laughs> some of the most interesting uh, videos out there and, and, Her, and talks uh, out on the internet <laughs> is Zizek, because uh, you will not predict what he's going to say next. No, in fact, he, he, if, if, um, he is of the left, but he is one of the most offensive and politically incorrect people you will ever, <laughs> ever encounter. <laughs> willfully so, willfully so. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, but makes sense. <laughs> And comes around if you listen to him <laughs> yeah, long enough. The, the, he brings no, it around, be, and you got to go. Point. Oh yeah, I get that now. Okay, I got but that. But yeah. his take on mindfulness is is that in a way, mindfulness, at least what he calls it, Western Buddhism and the Western Buddhism practice of mindfulness, is in some ways the most inauthentic practice available. <laughs> because the goal of Western mindfulness is is just to be able to get you to lower your anxiety enough so you can continue to be a cog in the wheel, right? Right. So yep. you're continue yep. to buy. Yep continue to work and not question the fact that the anxiety that you're attempting to still through mindfulness is a, is actually a, a, a reflection of your sanity. You should be feeling the things you're feeling and the moment you, that you're trying to move into is the is is not the real moment and this notion that um, that in some ways mindfulness if we're not careful is will, will turn us into capitalist zombies. We will work and we will spend and we will not ask ourselves what is this anxiety we're experiencing about? You know, mm -hmm. some of the things, I mean, there's a part of it too that we buy into that we have accept, we, we accepted as a result of being in this society and we are a cog in the wheel, although we like to demonstrate our independence and our individuality. Mm -hmm. But there's something very important about what he's saying there that we need to be aware of that and decide what we're going to do about it if we do anything. Well, when you say well, what we're going to do, because one, one of the things that, that Hackett said there is that if somebody comes in and they say that, look, you know, I've got all these things going on, all these conflicts in my life, you know, all this, this you know, I want, I want all this changed. Well, the goal is one thing is to be able to say that um, actually, no, the conflicts that you have 
are the life you have. You don't want to, you know, if you untie the knot, then you may have nothing at all. You do this sometimes in couples work. Uh, couples, I, I have this spiel where I always say, you know, couples don't have fights, they have one fight. And our goal is to name the fight you have. And the goal is not to stop that fight, because if we untie that knot, we untie the marital knot. Mm -hmm. But the goal is to be able to have some understanding so this conflict can move you forward. You should get better at it. It's not that it should stop. Right. And that I think there's something, mindfulness, if we're not careful, and some of the quick fixes that we have, are are aimed at uh, i mean you know I'm, I'm i'm not a huge fan of cbt you know good now that's not the oil that's that's cbd right that's yeah. okay that's, <laughs> Here we i'm go. a huge fan I'm of glad that you clarified all of I'm that i'm a huge right. fan because you know every night before i go to bed I, I a bathtub of cbd oil i'll just sort of lower myself into it but not cognitive behavioral therapy <laughs> i would never okay, do that, that but i would that, the yeah. bathtub okay, full of cbd go. just sort of <laughs> just sort of float if <laughs> i could have a swimming pool of cbd we'd have a party we'd all just kind of but what would that how would that end uh, with the police? I don't know. Uh, that doesn't sound right. That's but, true. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm not, I'm but the not, point, the point. The point, there was a point here somewhere. I'm not a fan of CBT, partly because I, I, I am, as you know, I, I supervise a bunch of folks. Yes. I supervise burgeoning psychologists and counselors and therapists. So they're, they're like, they're like, they're on their... Maybe CBT. They're, they're often uh, very young, as well. and so, often, yeah, their programs often sort of do this. And so often Until you convert them, I might say. I, so. I try to. Having, and usually having, conversion having involves, you know, it's, uh, you, ever, ever, you know what trepanning is? You put the hole in the head, <laughs> that's how. Oh, yeah, that was a while just, back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. we the uh, we ancient do Mayans anymore. used to do a lot of that trepanning sort of thing. Okay. It's not a, yeah. But, yeah. so they, they, they come in, and they'll often, um, and I'll, I'll see this where, you know, like, and, and I'll, I'll watch a video of, of one of their tapes here. Right. I'll often see an, an instance where, um, I don't know about you, <clears throat> yep, there you go. but um, there's this famous saying by one of my man, men, men, Wilford Bion. I've heard talked about him before, too. I bet we have. We have. And he says, anytime two people meet, an emotional storm is created. So his basis is that even, even among friends, there is always a disturbance in the in your internal world the minute someone comes close enough to you for it to be considered an encounter like the way the moon affects the tides right so there's always this emotional storm and we have a reflexive automatic way of being able to navigate this you know the earth doesn't have to think the moon the moon's already there and the goal is um, what we do with that and as therapists oftentimes the way they answer that initial impact of the person walking in and sitting in their office is to reach for a worksheet. The most... Okay, let's do this, right? I've actually been in that situation <laughs> supervising when the person left the room to get a worksheet. <laughs> That's right, yeah. And, the couple and they was, never came back, even though they had the well, worksheet. Well, <laughs> it took a long time. They must have had a Xerox copy, maybe, or something. But the couple, was they were crying in the, in the session when the person went for the worksheet. Well, worst okay. example, but yes, but, I But that's exactly a beautiful example mean. of how they are mediating the, that, that emotional storm. And there are ways to do that in an authentic manter, manner that generates the very impact that could be healing, right? right? Like you can tell when somebody is sitting across from you and they are literally waiting on the next thing they're going to say, right? Right. That would be the exa a wonderful example of inauthentic. But if you're in the presence of somebody who's open and you can tell they're actually listening to you, sure. that in of itself is a healing thing, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, too. I, mean, I don't think we often get that. Right. In our hustle bustle mm -hmm. society and well, chaos. I'll tell that we you, have occasionally now. when my wife overdoes her Xanax, I get that. I come home, you know, she drools a little, but I can tell she's listening. <laughs> you know. Let me just, so, uh, just uh, we'll have Julianne at some point, and she'll yes. clear up clear up uh, all of these she misconceptions. Will. Well, here's what she'll her, say. She said, the reason I need the Xanax is I'm married to this bastard. You know how many Xanax? Now, now that <laughs> part, give, I think I understand. <laughs> Absolutely, the yes. Well, you, you bring up some uh, interesting <laughs> ideas, too, and I think sometimes the behaviorist, not only the cognitive behaviors, but the behaviors themselves, mm -hmm. are really talking about how to end something a bad behavior how to right, how to yeah. stop something so mm -hmm. <clears throat> not not just lower anxiety but get rid of anxiety mm -hmm. so we know that they're marching well, uh, in the wrong I was trained I, sure. uh, Nate Azrin he was one of that because I was into behaviorism the reason I went to my program that I went to was Nate Azrin was there and he's the guy who helped invent token economy and this it. guy was like one of the foremost behaviors on the planet and I remember him giving a lecture and he's saying that anger is a bad thing 
and that if you can have an anger-free life, it means you're healthy. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I, boy, that sounds kind of, but it is. It's all about that anger is sign that there's a behavior that you need to to extinguish. Right. I mean, I mean, the, to, the uh, whole regime, uh, if you if mm-hmm. you think about it, is. Um, from the learning perspectives and the learning uh, theories that we count, mm-hmm. we uh, somehow quantify, and we're marching down mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. 10 to 1 to 0. Mm-hmm. And well, it happens all the time in psychotherapy. Here's the thing, though, because I was his, uh, I was the graduate assistant for the program and his main graduate assistant. I really think I broke him on this anger thing. <laughs> I really think I'm not hanging out with me enough. <laughs> I think he really at some point was like, you know, I... <laughs> Because, you know, just my mere presence toward the end, just, you know, he would. Um, my question is, <laughs> is that going to happen to me and Dr. Hackett? I think it's already here? happened. Right right oh, it's too late now. Okay, all go. this suppressed rage, you're like, God. <laughs> <laughs> like, after, you, you guys are going to start drinking after this. You're going to go down to, like, find, like, I don't know, uh, is the loft open is at this point? Is there anything <laughs> to drink around here now <laughs> is my question. Like, you know, so, you know. uh, yeah, well, that, it's kind of an interesting. Apple teenies. You guys look like guys who would really enjoy a good, uh, like a bucket of apple I teenies. I think that's an insult. Yeah, we'd probably we just go down to pluck chicken and have a chicken sandwich. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that, that would okay, get you. That, uh, that fighting, would do it for us. Dr. Hack is fighting back right now, so <laughs> he knows you're a vegan. So here <laughs> hey, we go. That's was, that, a, was, that, was that a shot across the bow? That was. That was a meat shot across the bow. Which, by the way, I had had a, uh, a vegan slider last night at a local restaurant. Can, okay. we say, can we say the restaurant's name? Can we say the Jar Flies? You like that Jar Flies? Mm-hmm. Uh, sure you Ever can. Have you been there? Mm-hmm. We've done, mm-hmm. we've done things. We've it done. was actually quite... Was, actually, we need sponsors for this uh, yeah. program. So, they should sponsor yes. Beyond. It was a Beyond Burger slider. I really enjoyed that. You know what? They're small. How many? You know how many I had? 42. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> but... Uh, see, I have to. I have to quickly call you on these things because if I let them stay just silence afterwards, the people go, "Oh, really? Forty-two? That seems like a lot." No, none of that's real. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm Irish. All right. Uh, all right. So, what were we talking about? I think we were talking about inauthent- authenticity. Inauthenticity. We're talking about the idea of the lived moment. I think on some level, your question was saying, "Look." I've just heard a great deal about the behavior of this really obnoxious, obnoxious, obsessive bastard. Surely this must be hell. And you were trying to say, I think you were trying to do the intervention. You were trying to say, how do we get you to live in the moment, man? Like, you know, whatever. Well, I know. No, it was just a reflective. I wasn't trying to do any work on you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I've tried that before. And, you know, nothing's say, happened. So anybody, anytime I, I go saying. looking for a therapist, like, they would be like, no, man, I've already heard stories. No. <laughs> I don't need this. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine the uh, rest of the therapists in town, if you were to call for an appointment, I mean, they'd probably like, close their practice. Here, I don't they, know for like, sure, here, but... They would hand me a hammer. Just hit me in the head with this a couple of times. <laughs> let's, let's get this over with. But but I'm, I'm fascinated about the topics that we've we talked about so far. I'm fascinated about you mm-hmm. in, in certain in certain ways, but it, this is not a necessarily podcast about yeah. you, but uh, you certainly have an influence on some things that we're talking about here. Um, but yeah, and I don't think I was tr- really trying to do an intervention, but I, I just want to know more. In other words, okay, if you do, and we talked about Malcolm uh, Gladwell just the other day, with, uh, if you want to be I an expert. I thought you were going to go with Malcolm X, but uh, Malcolm Gladwell. No, that's, that's, that's coming up that's on the good. schedule, but for the most part, 10,000 hours of practice if you want to be Boom. an expert. Mm-hmm. And somewhere ingrained in you is that if I'm interested in something, I'm I gotta get, going I gotta there. Get my thousand. I've got yeah. to start doing that. Well, it works like this, and this is an, my, I was really trying to get into, uh, I decided at one point I was going to get into Beethoven. And um, I don't know if you ever go on the Pirates Bay. I assume it's still there because Solseek. I got in trouble with a couple of lawyers, so I don't visit Pirates Bay anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a true story. All but right, but um, I went on the old Pirates Bay, and okay. you could literally find they had compiled um, 62 different conductors with 62 different symphonies. It may not all have been different symphonies of each of Beethoven's symphonies. And so I stole it. And so I would spend like, you know, um, I would be- Beethoven's first or second. I, I, I go, went through all of them, and I would listen to weeks on end of the same symphony just by the different. I would listen to it over and over oh, okay, again. Okay, hold, hold on, just a second. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I'm glad you you put yeah. that out there. Let's just take take a take it gets a worse. It gets take, worse. Take a policy. <laughs> and so the idea for you, 
I mean, I'm, my first thought was, okay, you real, really want to drill down and, and look at the comparisons between gonna, how this music is going to go. A, but so explain yourself, sir. There, there, there's like there's a crunchy style. There were um, Mahler came along and added a bunch of stuff, and so there's the romantic interpretation of Beethoven symphonies. There are all these different, and based on when the conductor was born, their influences, there was a return to what would be known as that's the crunchy style, a classic, like with classic instruments and pared down, all that sort of stuff. So all these sorts of stuff that you mm -hmm, get. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I probably read every single Beethoven biography in study. There's even a there's two there's one book by a psychoanalyst on Beethoven. I read that twice. And so, in the midst of all this, so okay. I'm, I'm going on and on. And my wife, at some point, she said, if Let I me just say, <laughs> thank God for Julie in so many ways. She okay, said, go ahead. If I have to hear one more. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> that is literally, you know, can we, can we hear some music with words? How about that? I said, well, I haven't gone to the ninth. That's got some libretto. That's, we can, <laughs> but I'm not going to make it. Though, I'm not going to make it to the ninth. You're you know, not gonna make it. Your marriage is not gonna make it to the night. <laughs> That's what she said. I can't. You know, I can't. So, so, it, I, and my point of saying this is that I got a point, maybe just to show how, how right. ridiculous I, I I can be, I guess. But I know. the idea is is that um, that there is, uh, like I said, there there is a core, there is a depth, there is a way to, you know, I don't have, like I I um, I, I can't read music, but even if you can't read music, people have come up with pictographs of Beethoven scores, and I've got those too, and I would occasionally try to look at them while I was listening to the music, so it has some sense of, of you know, placement of instruments, and, you know, his, his notions of tonality, and, and his compositional choices. I'll, I would I'd attempt at that too. But yeah. Hey, can I interject something? If I were to interrupt that, you were going through that, or, or your wife, Julia, at the house would say, hey, honey, how about this, or... Hey Dan, what what about the you know, could could you yeah could, just, could you yeah, respond to that? It's funny, you know, I, I do. Or say, hey, uh, no, I'm. I'm f no these talking, would be times when you know when people are when in the morning when everybody's asleep or you okay. know I would All be right. uh, I, I, it, they would often be when I was doing something or I would I had at that point I had a I didn't have a music room at that point. Maybe I did. At some point in this, I had a music room. Okay. All right. So I, I didn't mean to take there, us but, off yeah. on that. But, but there, but that's, that's his intervention. You're trying to see if, if, if this was taking the place of human interaction, if it was somehow uh, uh, impacting. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and also kind of being in that moment and being able to kind of uh, move with, the, mm. with what's happening in, in that time frame. But you, what you're saying is that you set aside that time to yeah, indulge. Just, uh, and is it about, an indulgence, though? I mean, is well, it this? It goes back. We talked about Doc Savage. I don't know if that got was on the thing, but what you know, um, the idea behind it is is that it's like lifting weights. So you 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 it's it's like li an aesthetic lifting of weights. You know, it's like a way of 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 placing something a burden in your path that you can grow from in a way. And so um, even if I were listening to those Beethoven things, I would still think about how do they connect with with uh, whatever philosophical discourse I might be engaged okay, in, or okay. how does it connect with the work that I do? And, oh, yeah. You know, that, that's why I think when I discovered some of the books where they were sort of talking about how, you know, how um, um, there's a mysterious letter that Beethoven wrote that some people considered a suicide note that he never actually, he never actually did, but, and if I remember correctly, it's, he scratched out, or he just, um, um, you, you didn't have, um, I think at some point, maybe I'm wrong about this, he could no longer write his father's name. And so there would be blank spaces where he would write his father because he was so, you know, his father wanted him to be the next, next Mozart. And so he was literally tortured mm -hmm. to play the piano, to play it till his fingers bleed. He was like four or five, six years old. He was, you know, humiliated. And, wow. Okay. And uh, wow. he was no Mozart. He wasn't, he wasn't natural prod prodigy. I mean, he, obviously he was Beethoven, so he had some stuff. But, right, sure. And so you can see tangled up in the music this, this you know, um, um, a cry for connection. Um, it's also oddly enough a, a, one of his letters where he's sitting at the salon and he and his friends are talking about um, uh, women's butts. <laughs> yes, I think it's like apparently that was a. I guess that's always been a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm not making that up. That's okay, a real thing. That's, yeah, that yeah, sounds like I'm, something I would make up, but it's not made up. <laughs> Tom or I are not going to answer and respond to any of that. But, okay, <laughs> but it is, yeah, so they were doing that. Yeah, but. he was he was really sort of you know talking. But um, 
Uh, you, you can see in the letters that we have left that, you know, you, you can see a sort of his humanity sort of seep through and all that sort of stuff. And so there are ways yeah. to be able to look into these things and and uh, know something more about the human condition than you did before well, you jumped in. It, it occurred to me that a, a lot of this, what, what could be considered obsessive, compulsive type um, responding and, and, and living, if you will, um, always ties back in to what you're doing in your work and trying to help someone else mm -hmm. in the therapy process or trying to broaden your own uh, view of things and gain more information. Finally get that. the respect I deserve. Right. Well, um, you know, one of that's the a nippy <laughs> situation in any case. But one, yes, sir. one of the things that occurs to me as I, as I listen to all this, and there's so many things that uh, I, it's really thought provoking, but this whole idea, is it, is, are these behaviors obsessive compulsive or is this more like what Jack Kerouac would refer to as being mad for life passionate oh, yeah, in yeah. other words oh, yeah. his his That's idea uh, and I and I'm, I'm paraphrasing <laughs> he got but, you out of trouble right but what there, what Kerou Kerouac said in on the road is he wanted to be a member of that group that tribe that was mad for life mad for talk mad for living uh, mad for experience and by being mad, he meant the whole idea of passion, so that he he and uh, uh, Neil Cassidy got in a car, went on the road, and saw America and lived America. And in fact, uh, the whole 60s thing is really engendered out of the whole Kerouac kind of trip, you know. So so uh, those of us baby boomers, Mike, we, we're sort of the the sons and daughters of Jack Kerouac in a lot of ways, you know, some of our attitudes. And I wonder if that whole that whole thing could be framed that way. But maybe I'm being too CBT about it, you know. I'm reframing. Well, no, no, no. That, 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 I like that because, you know, uh, especially since it makes me sound less crazy. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, you, you oh, said that's you guys... That's where I was going, but on the other hand. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we're good, the, we're uh, good. The children of, of Kerouac and Cassie, that, that, that explains the, uh, the smell of hash. Uh, I, uh, okay, I'm kidding. But uh, there's a, 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 a Kerouac quote, if I remember, he said that um, he wanted to eat with his food naked and quivering on the end of his fork. And um, that's where the, 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 the title for Burroughs' Naked Lunch comes from, from a Kerouac, Kerouac quote. But um, I like that. I, I like the idea of being able to, um, um, that Winnicott prayer, Lord, let me be alive when I die. And uh, Freud talks about it in terms of that, you know, we need to de develop a love affair with life. And so how do we find, you know, a way to be, to be, um, um, and there's something about that, um, that imminence, that, um, that explosion, that uh, it can be, um, it can be a, uh, a, a, a drug, it could be something you could pursue that could keep you away from quieter moments, I, I, I guess, too, but... I like that. I like the. Um, it's not. Well, it's it just it, it 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 make it makes sense in in lots of ways. I think it connects with authenticity and this idea of just living life and taking advantage of all that we have. I mean, it gets back to what Tom and I were talking about with Pinker. I mean, we're in a place now that we have more. We have more riches. We have less mm -hmm. violence. We have all of these things at our disposal. Why not go for mm -hmm. just everything that you can learn and kind of move. In this, in this place yeah, but most that people we're don't. in now. I think that um, I, think, I was talking I to right. a, a patient a while back, and they were describing um, their um, uh, ex, and they said something to the effect that, well, you know, I, I still miss them because, and it's been years and years and years, but I miss them because they had such a passion. And the, this individual was, was really into collecting things, and they had, mm. uh, um, they were into things. And so this person was saying that I, I don't I, I've encountered a lot of people since then but but most people don't have that and the qu that question might be is is this is this passion is this something we're all born with and then it gets beaten out of us that um, we become uh, departmental we become uh, compartmentalized all that sort of stuff or is it something that some people are born with or is it something that we have to uh, learn to cultivate? I mean, that's, an, I mean, what, what uh, Well, I, I mean, I, if you wanted an answer to that, I would say all of the above. Mm -hmm. Because I think um, there, there, are, there are some educators who say that the educational system sort of squashes yeah. that and Oops. tries to make you conform and, mm -hmm. and really squashes that 
passion. And really what you want to do is every individual needs to find that passion. What gets them up in the morning? What, what makes time go by so fast when they're focused on something and using the moment? Being in it is not just the phrase, but it's mm -hmm. actually taking advantage of the resources and who you are mm -hmm. and finding that passion within you to sort of move forward. And I think that's a goal f for everyone that comes into therapy, but I think it's across the board. But, but when you say that though, I mean, maybe I'm wrong because, um, and it also could be because I am crazy, but I... Uh, jury's out. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. They, and they're not Today coming we back. came close, but I think the jury's still out. <laughs> and the jury's right, out and they decided not to come back. <laughs> they're not coming <laughs> <We're> back. Not. <laughs> Done with it. No but um, the, um, um, I think that um, if I were to tell, you know, obviously this is being recorded and maybe reverberating forever. <laughs> uh, my my the, the things that interest me or how I pursue my interests for lots of folks that would be that's just crazy that mm -hmm. would not be you know that would right. be uh, this what you call passion or what you call investment is frivolous you know it's not um, um, it is so I, I mean I wonder about this I well wonder, I, I think uh, you know also just our culture and what we brought up uh, um, those of us who came up in the 50s and the baby boomers this time and said that like w um, what the model that we had was that you go to work for the company you work for 30 years you get to go watch you retire you singularly focus take care of your family go mm -hmm. to work and do this and these uh, very sort of uh, narrow guidelines that we sh should live our lives in and I think we're coming to find out that maybe there's other ways to do it so mm -hmm. maybe this is our sort of response to that well I mean because that would be Kerouac and Cassidy were sort of reacting against that very right. sort of culture mm -hmm. right yeah. mm -hmm. that sure. was there you mm -hmm. know that this is this is mind-numbing this is you know the reason why daddy comes home and drinks until he goes to sleep at night is because the life he has is killing him. Well, and, right. and also I think w what we're discovering now is uh, more of the interest, and you've certainly demonstrated this, with the arts, with music, um, those kinds of things, other than the grind of making mm -hmm. a living and getting mm -hmm. through and those kind of things. We're now at a place where we can expand and look at what are we really interested in and what is my passion. Mm -hmm. well, so so but the, the question may be then, is it that if someone could – could find what they're passionate in, then they can then have lived moments with it. They could pursue it. So would the goal then be like, um, you know, you uh, you bring them into a room and they can pick up all of these different objects, or they can they can look at these different things and they'll whatever suits their fancy. Okay, we'll go for that. Is it is is that the equation, or is it? Um, and I'm I mean I'm obviously have an idea about this from from. Uh, a psychoanalytic perspective. What else have I got? But um, is that the goal? Well, I mean, how do we? How, you guys have things that you like, right? Well, the the first thing sure. is when we when we engage in that human apparent apparently human need to label everything. When we label a passion, do we uh, maybe in some way kill its essence? In other words. Oh, they're they're obsessed with this concept or they, this kind of thing. The, the why that why that sort of is an idea that popped up at, last night. I saw a a, a band that uh, played an amalgam of what could be called jazz, funk, rock, R and B, and they made the point that that people need to call it by some name. But what I saw was just a bunch of guys blowing and playing music, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were just going. And so when we, sometimes when we say, okay, this passion, oh, well, that's, you know, that's really over the top. Well, what makes it over the top? And, and it has an essence. Mm -hmm. Do we kill it by trying to, trying to encompass it? with some kind of label, some kind of walls around it. There are just so many um, ways that I think the, the culture and the, the society we put together uh, tends to reject that. And so they're always looking for uh, judgment, right or wrong, this is not good, this is good, this is a category, let's put things in pigeonholes, let's make uh, a, a label. And now, with our current um, society and not to be political, but we're in these tribes, we're in the camps, and so now it's either or. So it becomes a zero or a one, it becomes one or the other, as opposed to being those things that we can develop unique 
because uh, everybody's special. Well, there's some truth to that. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I like this discussion where we're kind of saying if you call it something, then it suddenly puts some boundaries on it. Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about that a little bit last week as well. And there's a, there's a saying by uh, uh, Lacan. He says that um, the word is the murder of the thing. He also has a statement that um, we're the only animal tortured by language. And so, <laughs> where, and, oh, that's great. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> and you, you can see that there's a benefit of this. But um, if, and there's another famous that, you know, if we're not, let, either we use language or language uses us. And usually it's language uses us. The naming is often a way, right? That there's something dangerous about passion. There's something dangerous about getting lost in something. We talked last time about the notion of between assimilation and accommodation. Right. To grow a mind. I mean, if you, like, uh, when I think of some of the, my favorite music out, my albums, and often I didn't like them at first, right? Like, mm -hmm. my, what is this crap? And then suddenly, somewhere down the line, right. I'm like, oh, how have I lived without this? Right. right? <laughs> I'm not the same person that started this journey with this piece of music. I'm different now. And I think there's something dangerous and scary about that. We might want to, want to murder things because we talked about that last time about the tyranny of automaticity, that the goal of our nervous system is to render as much automatic as possible because that is the easiest way to pass our genes on from an evolutionary biological pers perspective. Automaticity, a certain level of it is really important. You know, we don't want to think. We may not want to feel. Because, because it's like climbing a rock wall. It's, it's adventurous. You, you, you said something, and it, it, it really resonated with me about when two people meet and interact, that there is a, a disturbance. Mm -hmm. And that often we, we work to mitigate that disturbance. In, mm -hmm. in, in my case, a, a lot of times I have a tendency to, to go to the, I'm introspective, I, I'm shy, so I'd just rather mm -hmm. remove myself from the situation. But really, what you're removing yourself from by trying to encompass it with CBT or or flight or fight uh, fight or flight or those kinds of things, what you're really doing is avoiding an adventure. Right. Right. So and a potentially dangerous one. Right. Because the person across from you could disturb you in ways that you can't get undisturbed. <laughs> right, right, right. And, right, like, yeah. and I, I think that the, any adventure, there is the potential for calamity, or it wouldn't be an adventure, right? Right, yep. A roller coaster ride is the exact opposite of an adventure, right? Because it, it, is, it, is a, it is a canned experience that has no, it has the faux uh, okay. risk connected to it. Yeah, I'm just saying that's not what the average person goes to a roller coaster they're looking for the, they think that's it if right? I want to get but a real adventure you could get hurt well there could be uh, caution tape police tape at some point circling the place where you were if you're not right that's, that's right, right. <laughs> that is all right well I was just I was thinking that uh, life really requires courage uh, and you have to take those adventures mm -hmm. out there and you have to look and find your passion you have to figure out what you're willing to do and uh, examine life the unexamined life, for example. Well, but, and no one gets out alive anyway. So what the heck, right? Right. <laughs> and, uh, yes. we, uh, we all owe God a death. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, this conversation was um, <clears throat> an adventure. It was. Uh, so I was disturbed. I, I'm yeah. say. I, <laughs> disturbed. There's probably a lot of people that watch this who are going to be disturbed, huh? too. We want to yeah. apologize in, uh, in advance for all the things that, that just happened here. Well, that was good. So, can we can we summarize with a couple of things, or is it just too much? Well, for I'm us crazy, to do it? and we don't want to put the word uh, on it because it uh, it interferes with it. But um, I, I'm, I let that go. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. respond to what you just said. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, right, we, so, what do you think? Can we summarize it that this is about? Um, you know, Freud says that the goal of life is to be as best that we can at working, loving, and playing. Yes. And I think we focused a little on playing today when we talk about some of the arts and, and music sure. and whatnot. But, you know, it's important that all three of them, we don't want to place it. They're all equally important. So maybe the goal is how to be able to, uh, to realize the, uh, the, the dangers, potential dangerous and, um, and gains of, of having a lived life. Maybe. All right. I'm good with that.
Well, it's been a special day, so I have to say this has been a lot of we fun. We got hacked. <laughs> we 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 got we got hacked uh, because Dr. Hackett is uh, in the building, and um, you know uh, I appreciate this, Tom. I appreciate Let's you stopping it, by and being a. And I part want I want one of those questions. I want those. We're five doing questions. it. I want those five questions. I want and I want I want I want they got to be some incom- uncomfortable questions too. Maybe you know like. Is that the you know, we because we want you thoroughly disturbed I for want, for grill the expert. Ask me, have I ever found my grandmother attractive? <laughs> Listen. You know, if if we didn't if we didn't talk about it today, I don't know if we're going to have a breakthrough in, with these five questions. I think we we got a lot out today yeah. for something, and uh, I don't know what just happened. That was my phrase. What just happened? Okay. I didn't deliver the punchline of that joke because it's really inappropriate. <laughs> yes. yes. But, uh, but. All right, we, we're going to we're we're going to end on that note. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, come back. Let's do this again. Talk to you next time. Thank you.